Welcome to another free tutorial video from Siebes Visual Technology. In this tutorial, we'll explore the artistic side of 3D modeling and unleash our creativity on otherwise functional but visually mundane CAD constructions. Join us as I demonstrate how to infuse organic and natural elements into your 3D models using the powerful combination of Final Render and Final Tune. Get ready to bring life and artistry to your designs. I'm your host, Edwin Braun. Let's dive in. Before we start, let's have a look at the model we got here. So this is a model I got from the internet. It's a CAD model of an office building or a building. And it's pretty standard. It's a CAD model, probably created with AutoCAD or similar CAD models. The only thing I can complain about this model, because we love to complain about things. Let me just zoom in here is how it was built. So it's very problematic for visualization in general. All the edges you see here are actually, in fact, true objects. This is a box, this is a box, this is a box, this is a box. So we have face on face, all the horrible things you should never do when you're into visualization and uh, rendering, because this is very problematic for global illumination renderers, uh, renderers that are really accurate. They will catch on these edges and things. It's just terrible. But for now, we would just ignore that because we're using Final Render and Final Tune in our tutorial here. And Final Render is very good at fixing problematic models automatically. So we don't care for now about this bad modeling practice here. Um, let me just move back here and the other thing I want to mention is just we have one light source and we have a camera here. I will talk about why the light is positioned the way it is positioned. Let me just show you. So it's uh, on purpose and we will discover and discuss why I did that and how we proceed from there. Also, this tutorial will be in several uh, steps. The first step is we'll explore the hatching map, the hatching texture with a fine tune material. And uh, let me just bring up the material editor. So what we are going to do is we'll change out some materials. So probably I want to change the floor material. I'll start with a floor material and we are just going in and choose a final tune shading material. So now I have the final tune shader. And then the next thing I want to do is probably set up this material and then just instance it to the other um, objects in the scene. So the first thing I want to do and start is with a file tune hatching map. And let me adjust this file tune hatching map. But probably before we do so, let me just copy this into our other slots. Um, I want the same map here, I'll use instance. And I want the same map in here for now. So now we have here these final tune uh, material and with the hatching map in there. Let me adjust this one because this is our instances, it will be adjusted everywhere. So let's see what's what we can do with this map. The first thing we want to do is I want to use the hatching map. As I mentioned, we are going in steps with this tutorial. So first we will explore the hatching map and what we can do with it and what's the idea behind it because it's very unique and you can create amazing art styles with it. So let me just uh, go in here and choose this little cross. It's a GIF file, so nothing spectacular. It's just uh, an X. So the next thing I want to do is probably make this map, uh, the stroke a little bit smaller. Once more, let me just remind you, we're talking about this little X. And now the hatching map will draw a lot of these X's onto our object and based on several other options we have here. So let's probably um, have a look with active shade. And as I mentioned, we're using Final Render and Active Shade. So we will see how our object looks like. Let me just zoom in a little bit more. 
So we see this is our hatching map for now. And I would like to bring your attention to some areas. We have this area here, the highlight area, and we also have the shadow area that has no material yet. And here we have a very nice and cool feature, and I will talk about it uh, in depth a little bit later. Um, we have the shadow area. Let me just instance that over here. Now the shadow area gets also the hatch pattern. And I'll put it in the specular area as well. And now our specular area also has this hatching. And the great thing now is we can now control our shading based on hatching patterns or the density of our hatching pattern. So how dense are our little axes or crosses here? So the next thing I might want to do is reduce the overall density. So I'll put that uh, down to 50. And we want to make sure that we have a little bit of highlights um, here. Let me just move in a little bit closer. So now we have this shading based on the hatching. Because I'm using a directional light, it's not that obvious. You can see it between the highlights and uh, shadows. But let me just dial in some other values. And that's why I place the light uh, in that way so that we see the highlights here. So the first thing I want to do is um, maybe make our cone a little bit smaller. So now I made the cone here a little bit smaller so that we can see here. And now if I adjust the brightness, we can see our hatching pattern automatically changes accordingly. So the hatching pattern or the density of our little axis is dependent on our shading uh, output. And if I make this brighter, we can do it like that. Or we can even do a combination of light rise, which does uh, control the hot spot. So now these things are closer together. Let me just increase that. Now we are at five, so we are even getting closer here. So we can do either with the light intensity or with the light rise. So that just controls our hotspot, how far our hotspot uh, bleeds out. The higher this value, the more our hotspot bleeds out. We can see that really nice in real time with Final Render. And that's a really powerful feature in Final Render. We can see the final illumination, the final uh, calculated texture here. The next thing we uh, might want to do is still increase maybe a little bit um, our uh, density so that we have a higher density and maybe reduce our highlight here. So now we have a little bit of a higher density here. And then I think we're pretty good here with the explanation of how this map works. So once more, it's an effect that is dependent on the illumination levels here and the shading is visualized or done by the amount of uh, hatching or little crosses in this case we add here. So let me just, oops, let me just zoom in here a little bit so that we can see what's going on. So we have all these little axes. Right now they are, um, uh, pretty ordered. So we want to have like it was drawing drawn by a human. So we can add or remove the homogeneous uh, look. So we can add more random and the smaller the number, the more random we have. So I have now a rotation on our little X. So we get this spidery look or web like look for our shading. And then we also can add a variation in the placement. We can move them left to right, right to left a little bit. And then on top of all, we can also define the position where we want to move our stroke, our hatching pattern. So we can move that either to the right or we can move it to the left. 
So right now this is very subtle, but if you have uh, any other uh, pattern, uh, you would see a huge difference here. So let me just cancel that here. So that's the uh, hatching uh, map that takes any bitmap and you can use that. Oh, let me, for example, let, let me just change the, the bitmap and, and just do that for the fun of it. Let's choose a different map. So as I mentioned, it just takes a map. The map looks like this right now. And we are using this to draw on the surface. And again, the density is our simulation of the shadow. And another great thing I might want to add here, let me just increase the density maybe a little bit. Uh, maybe let me do 150 so that we have a little bit more density. And also let me reduce the highlight. So now we have a little bit more density. And the great thing is we can actually turn off the shading effect of the material itself. So I don't want to render the shadows. Now what we see is a shadow only created by higher density. Let me just move closer in here. So this shadow is just created by a higher density of our stroke map. So keep that in mind. I turned off the shadow, but still the map is working. We are not projecting the shadow as a shadow function, a ray trace shadow, we are now using the texture map, the stroke map as a shadow. And we can do the same, uh, but it's not that obvious right now for, for the highlight. We would need different uh, shapes and forms. But I can turn off the specular highlight and the highlight would be just created by reducing the density of our stroke pattern. So that's a very unique and powerful function you have here. You have really nice control over the effect of the hatching and how the hatching is applied. And as I mentioned, we can use all kinds of uh, textures to do uh, the hatching. So next I want to, let me just close that. The next thing I want to do is Let's go in the next section to the fully procedural hatching methods. Before we do that, I'll uh, zoom out a little bit more so that we have this in view. And then uh, the next thing will be the procedural, fully procedural hatching. Let's try out the fully procedural hatching. But before we do that, let me turn off the rendering view and we need to prepare something before we can explore the fully procedural hatching methods we have in Final Tune. Let's start with stippling. Stippling is an art method where you just use your pen and uh, drop the pen down straight to create little dots. So and the density of the dots creates the shading. And uh, this is actually an art form. So there's artists out there, amazing artists that use just a, a little pen and drawing little dots. And the more dots, the darker the area and the less dots, the, the brighter the area. So it's a very interesting art style and we can kind of simulate exactly this stippling art style. So I switch to stippling, as you can see here. And for stippling, we want to uh, um, change our settings uh, because stippling can be very time consuming if you are doing uh, extreme values. So just follow this tutorial. So let me increase the map to 1024. I want the stroke size that's 100%. Let's start with that. And the next thing I want, I just turned that off by because I don't like it. It doesn't matter right now. Um, so our map size, 1024, 100% stroke size. Be sure you have start with that. And we'll start with the safe place here as well. 100% density and just so 
to tell you this has no influence at all. I will show you later, but this has no influence, so it doesn't matter what's here. I just want to clean up our interface here. So now we have our stippling, procedural stippling. So it will not use any bitmap or anything. And uh, let me just activate uh, our fine render and see what we can do with the uh, stippling. And as you can see already, similar to our uh, bitmap hatching method we have here, we now have this dot pattern. And the darker it gets, the more dots it will create or bigger dots it will create. Um, it's not bigger, sorry. It creates more dots per area. Um, I see that those dots are pretty big, so I'll try 50% and now we are getting somewhere. So that starts looking really nice. So we have the bright area here, less dots, and then it fades into the darker area until we are in the darker areas or in the shadow area, so to say. And now we might want to play around with our density, for example. So we can increase the density. And now I think we are getting somewhere. I love this kind of thing. You can already see the shadow regions or shadow areas. They have the highest density of dots. And same deal as before, we can turn off in our shader. And this is really a powerful, unique feature in our shader. We can turn off the shadow. So now the ray, sh ray trace shadow is no longer cast onto the surface. We just create the shadows with the help of the uh, dot density or stippling pattern. So this is our density here. And you can create really amazing and interesting effects. And another thing I didn't mention so far is we can also uh, control the, uh, let me just move a little bit out here. We can control our uh, color, obviously. Let me just um, use this color here. And maybe not that extreme. Let me just do a darker color like so. So we can colorize this or even use a bitmap or a texture to color our dots. So that's also possible. And this alone can create really nice effects, especially when you start getting really crazy and, and creative about it, when you start layering multiple stippling patterns with multiple colors and multiple levels. Oh, it's, it's just endless. You can create really amazing artwork with that. Um, so I just wanted to show you that and mention that we can control the color of the dots as well. And now we have really this nice uh, stippling pattern. And again, like before, these densities we get here, these natural densities to simulate light and shadow is actually dependent on light and shadow. So if I increase the um, map here, or let me just move that over here. So we are in this viewport, we can see it's uh, reacting in real time here. Uh, let me just bring that back in and we have the uh, pattern here. So stippling is a really nice, amazing art style and you can add it to all of your models and create really amazing looking renderings. And again, all the other settings here in the stroke density, they will work as expected. So you can control the density, you can control the light and everything, uh, the light rise, which controls the area, how it reacts to illumination. And we have all the settings here for the stippling. So that is our stippling uh, pattern. And the next one I'm going to, uh, or want to talk about is the points. And points is kind of a rastered approach, unless we use um, a little bit of random, but it's just points and the size of the point simulates the shading. So let me just make these points a little bit smaller. 
something like that. And you already can see the look is from like you had this old comic style where you had these points, these colored points. And we could also use a texture map to uh, color these points to get this uh, popular poster-like effect. Um, however, we can see that our shadow is now fully overpowered because we are controlling the size based on the illumination levels. That means we get maximum size in the darker areas. So my maximum level, I want to reduce that. Let me just reduce the maximum level to something like that. And probably I would like to have a more light influence. So uh, maybe I do it like that. And probably we need for this effect to adjust our light as well. So I'll go to a much wider illumination. Uh, area here so that we get this nice uh, fading of our light. And again, the position of the light is in no way a good idea. It's just to illustrate the effect of how shadows are created here. So let me just zoom in here. We see the shadow of this rim here. We see this shadow from our uh, uh, balcony here. So and here this nice fading based on the size of the dot to the darkness. So this is now a pretty regular. Then we can just add some random in various axes. And then you will see that it actually moves a little bit, but it stays in a raster-like um, position. So that is how points work. And uh, the most important part is the minimum level, maximum level, and the density, obviously. We can reduce the density, so we have a less dense area. And then we might want to reduce our light rise, and we see here our nice illumination effect. So this is how the point works, and it creates really interesting and amazing effects. And again, you can combine these and let me just talk about the shading steps. Right now we have eight steps, so eight levels where we create points or change the size of the points. I'll increase that to 16. And now we have 16 steps, so it's much, much finer, this transition here, to, to simulate or catch the uh, light fading here. Or I can reduce that to four and then we just have four steps to uh, uh, the biggest um, dots. The next thing we have on our fully procedural hatching patterns is vertical lines. Let me just choose the vertical lines, which is OK. We need to make sure we have everything in order. No random. And here we go. So here we have our vertical lines and probably our max level is also way too high because it now, as you can see, modifies the width of our vertical line to simulate the density or shadow areas. And next thing is horizontal lines and horizontal lines are the same. And here you can see the nice transition from thin to thick in the shadow area. So shadows are also uh, simulated just by uh, changing the thickness of the line. Let me just increase the shadow area. And the thickness of the line is just doing this. And here we have nice patterns where we have everything really nice. OK, so these are the fully procedural line styles we have. We have reached the last section of this tutorial video. And in here, I will just continue with the model and scene we have created before. But we will now concentrate on the final two line styles or outlines we want to create for our model. So I moved the light a little bit and I did a setup. Let me just render this as is so that we can have an idea how it looks like right now.
As we can see, we I chose the stippling pattern and now let's add a fine tune outline effect or line rendering effect. For that, I'll go into the effects menu. Uh, the effects dialog allows us to add final tune as a render effect. So this will be rendered after the actual rendering is done. And now I'm going to just use max background to show you what happens when we just add final tune and use it in its default settings. So right now we have everything default. I just added final tune and what it does, it collects now the data, the geometric data, the information of the lines. It will connect the lines and create this wonderful cat style uh, look and feel outline rendering. We have various line styles. We have other tutorial videos that go in depth into the line styles and what we can do with it. But for now, I just might want to increase the thickness of the lines. And I would like to have these lines along with our rendering or shading we have. So I'll turn back on the shader. And now when I render, we will get both. We will get the shader, so our stippling, hatching, final tune shading. And in the second pass, we will get our beautiful, nice outlines rendered on top of it. So the combination you have here, what you can do and achieve here is really amazing. And the same thing is here. The line styles we can control or use is a really powerful thing here. We can go into our line style editor and now we can change, for example, the thickness. So we can say we want a special behavior in the shadow areas. Let me just turn on the connect lines. We want a different behavior in the shadow area. So I could use the shadow color instead or I can set a special color here in the shadow area. So I can turn like you would see it in, in a comic book or art style. In the shadow areas, I want to have a brighter um, line and maybe, uh, yeah, same thickness. So now I have defined this and I'll do that for the crease lines as well. I'll turn on the shadow area and I want to have a lighter color and do the same for the intersection uh, lines as well. Connect them and have a, usually you would copy and paste the color. But for now, for the sake of the tutorial, we are lazy. We just want to show you how it goes and how the effect works. So wherever there is a real shadow, so a ray trace shadow, we, will, we should see a brighter outline. So there's a lot of powerful functions and features. You can create your own art style. You can save these line styles and use these line styles later on. And we can see wherever there's a true shadow, so no illumination at all, it uses the new line style we have just designed here. So everything that is in full shadow will use our new line style. And the same deal is true for, um, for example, for the main line, we can change the color of the this line. So we could just change it to something like that. And we can also change this color to something else just to show you where are our different colors. And then we can just render again. So we can create really amazing artwork. If it's nice or not, that's in the eye of the beholder. You have to decide if it's art or not, but you have all the powerful tools to create your own style. That's very unique to you. You can save your special style, your special amount of uh, lines and how you want to create a drawing. So you can create your signature look for your renderings and no one else will be able to easily copy this signature look. And again, this works with global illumination, with the fine tune shaders, with any shader you have uh, there. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out our other file render and file tune videos. And also please subscribe to our YouTube channel and to our Vimeo channel. That helps us and I will keep on doing more and more videos for you. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day.